Okay. So So today we'll be looking at effective communication skills in the workplace. The key to successful teamwork. Uh, it is essential for us as a team to be able to relate information clearly and concisely in order to avoid any form of uh, vagueness in our discussion and ensure productivity and accurate uh, implementation of assignments. So we'll be looking at communication, effective communication, communication statistics. For this, for the first item and the second item, we have communication, we have effective communication, emphasis on effective communication. So we have communication statistics. Then why are we actually looking at this uh, communication, effective communication? We have benefit of effective communication, uh, component of effective communication, the framework we can implement in uh, to ensure we have an effective communication strategies to follow. Now looking at the challenges, deliverables, and the, the marking rubric. So for communication, as uh, generally known by everyone that in the workplace, it refers to the exchange of information, ideas, and thoughts, and messages between individuals uh, in our respective uh, places, be it at work, school, even in the academy, we communicate. Absence of communication, that the communication can definitely can't achieve any team's goal. So for any team we find ourselves, we should definitely communicate. Unless you are working, if you are working uh, alone, you are working independently. But if you are working with team, you need to communicate effectively. So that's what we have here. That refers to exchange of information, ideas, and thoughts. Just like when we have uh, on our mentoring session, we are talking about okay, how do you communicate? How do you talk to your mentor? How do you talk to your mentee? So that's also a way of, you know, and enhancing our communication. So it encompasses various forms. It can be verbal, it can be non-verbal, and it can be in written, written, in written form. So effective communication. Uh, hello, Abdullahi. General communication is. It's, hello, Abdullahi. It's conveying information clearly, accurately, and comprehensively. Ensuring that intended information is not misunderstood by the recipients. It is not enough for you to see big vocabulary before you can relate your your information. You can relate your information. The fact that the person you are relating the information to easily conceives what you intend to um, to relate, then you've communicated effectively. So it is this is a process that is the ability to convey your information clearly and accurately. Sorry clearly and accurately and comprehensively. Use of big vocabulary sometimes does not... Uh, Hello, Abdullahi, can you hear us? There are times that you can see big vocabulary and the person you are discussing to does not really understand what you are even saying. Then you have not actually communicated. So for you to communicate effectively, it must be clear, it must be accurate, it must be, accurate, it must be comprehensive, such that the intended information is understood by the can you hear us? Hello, Abdullahi. Sorry, apologies, please. Yeah, your voice is quite slow. You can increase uh, the volume or try to speak a bit audibly. Is it clear now? Is it clear now? Try to increase the voice again. Sorry, is it clear now? Can you hear me clearly now? Hello? Okay, it's quite better. Okay, apologies. Apologies for that, please. Please, where should I continue from? Uh, from this, the first slide. The first slide, okay. 
So, I said before the outline, we'll be having our communication, we're having effective communication. That is what difference between the communication and communicating effectively. Then we discuss communication statistics. Why do we actually need to communicate effectively? Then looking at the benefit of effective communication, look at the component, the framework we can utilize to ensure we have effective communication, strategies to improve communication, look at what to look like for today, our delivery goal and our So uh, for the communication, we say that generally it is the it is the exchange of information, ideas and thoughts and messages between individuals. And I say that communication in our workplace, we can communicate in our workplaces, our homes, schools. So anywhere we find ourselves, for us to relate with anybody, we have to communicate. So it can be verbal, it can be non-verbal, and it can be a written form. So uh, as an employee, you should be able to communicate both effectively, both in written form and verbally. Effective communication compared to what general communication means, it is your ability to communicate clearly, accurately, and comprehensively to ensure the intended information is understood by your recipients. So if your information, the information you're intending to pass is not well understood by the recipient, the person receiving the message, then you have not communicated effectively. So it is not a must for you to use big vocabulary before the person you are communicating to understands what you are saying. But your ability for the person to understand this is what you are actually relating to the person do this, then he, know, he or she knows what to do at the right time. So it involves not only transmitting information, but also active listening, feedbacks, and understanding. So that's what effective communication means. Now, we have to be looking at communication statistics. If you look at what we have here, see that 25% productivity increases in teams with effective communication. That is, team that has effective communication, their productivity increases by 25 percent also we have 4.5 talent times retention is generated with effective communication when we say talent retention retention it means that uh companies there are companies that uh that that, that keeps uh their staffs yes they keep their staff that company that lay off out of maybe due to ineffective communication but companies that that, that, that communicate effectively, that promote effective communication when they are given tasks, tasks are communicated effectively. Such companies retain their staff 4.5 times compared to companies that give out that, that give out tasks without giving them the clear giving them clear cut information about the task or not giving them the right information for them to achieve that task. So we have it's six percent employees site lack lack communication as a cause of workplace failure. That is, a company that has that fuels due to one reason or the other, if you look at the root cause, there is high possibility, there is high chance that there is the lack of communication. Please, Daniel, want to say something? Please, for me, so I can speak. Oh, please, can we confirm if you can make early? Okay, thank you. Let me continue then. All right. So, looking at this, 97% employees believe communication impact their task eff efficacy on a daily basis. So, if you are given a task, just like the way we are giving you challenges and we are giving you all the needed information you need to complete that challenge then that is also a means of communication so if you find yourself in a team and you are given a task and the task is completed is connected to you effectively then it means that this analysis this status is saying that 97 percent employees when they are when their tasks are connected to them effectively it increases their efficiency so look at this 28 percent of employees point out poor communication as a reason for breach deadline. So which means that some employee that if they are not, if they didn't get the right information about the task, 
they might not be able to meet the deadline for that task. So for you to communicate, when we get to the framework, you need to utilize for you to have a communication, you will understand better why this particular statistics is there and how you can also ensure you communicate to your fellow employees uh, effectively. So what are the benefits? When you communicate effectively to your to your partner or to your uh, partner, you tend to have clear direction about your, your project. It improved communication. So if we don't slack, we also notice that there are times that when you communicate to someone, just let me use your your mentor, your peer mentor as an instance now. So when you have a relation, you communicate clearly if it there is no deadline attached to the task and uh, the CEO comes. QA is my task. What happens to complete your task? Then you feel, well, sir, I, I thought you said, I thought it was like an open task. It was my bit man. Even a task without deadline, you can, out of your own and work out of the act of your own productivity you can deliver the work accurately but as some people that without deadline they won't turn in the task appropriately so that kind of attitude it can lead to it can it can cause a it can cause conflict which means when you communicate effectively it can basically reduce conflict in your team so it's increased collaboration When you are in conflict, then you should definitely have a positive work environment. If you're giving me a task, after like you have to submit this task at this hour, I have to work towards the hour. What are the things I need to do? So when you clearly state, when you clearly state your need to your fellow or to your co-worker, then it is going to improve your work environment. It increases engagement and positivity, stress. You need to go through the stress of I don't know what um plan is plan is meant to submit. I don't know how it's going to feel if I do this TV. So at the end of the day you ensure that at the end of the day there'll be back and forth in achieving that task. But if your employee have actually given you okay, I need to do this deadline, these are my key point indicators in your task. So then it will be easy for you to go through your work without any stress. So that explain what you mean by employee retention. So these are the key components of effective communication. We are talking about clarity. When you communicate, ensure it is clear to you. Look at okay, put yourself in the shoe of the of the recipients. What have what I've communicated? Is it clear enough for this person to understand? Don't assume. Try to make it clear. Active listening also is a form of having effective communication. If you are discussing with just like your peer mentoring session or challenge, you uh, you are in the role of a mentor, you are in the role of a mentee. So which means as a mentor, you should be able to offer active listening to your mentee. And for a mentee also, you should be able to listen actively when your mentor is talking to you. So empathy, then empathy is showing your concern showing your concern you want to discuss you want to communicate you don't need to talk it's a very harsh tone you have to empathize with who you are communicating with then you should be able to give feedback also so feedback is you are given a task you should be able to give feedback on the task assigned to you so this is the framework for effect for you to have effective communication allocation that is who are you assigned tasks to that tax to if you are in a position of a team lead and you have four, four, four to five uh, engineers, let me say data engineers working in your team, you should be able to just say, okay, guys, do this. You should be able to assign, okay, let's assume Pascal is in my team. I can say, yes, Pascalin, at Pascalin, I want you to do this. But if you are giving, if you are trying a task directly to the team without 
and send it to a, spe to a specific person, uh, you might not be able to, they might not be able to get the work done, hoping that yeah, someone else will have uh, taken the responsibility to do the work. So you should be able to assign directly to someone to so where is the old allocation of task, then how the workflow, okay, how do you do the task? Given it, this is actually relative, it's actually relative because that times that for the how, it is based on your own experience that you know how to do this. Just like an academy gave you a task, they will give you the how, or you really want to dig, to dig deeper to ensure the how is well implemented. So the action, what, this is very, very essential. After knowing who you are, who are assigning the task to, what am I supposed to do? What the word should be clear and concise. This is what I need you to do. It has to be clear, unambiguous, and concise. The due date is very essential. Just as I've said earlier, you must that you must give due date. Okay, I want you to submit your so report to me latest tomorrow p two p.m. That is an exact date and time. So don't assign task without having a due date you might not get the task you assigned to the person done. So you must know, you must have your way. Then the tools, I want to develop, I wanted to write the reports using Google Doc. It has like a way, that is the tools that have specified the tool you need to use. I want to do so, 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 so with maybe with Kafka. I want to do, I wanted to build a database with Postgres. So that is the what, that means you are giving what a way, that means you are assigning it a, a tool to that particular task, then the goal. There are times that if we know the goal for assigning it, for completing a task, we tend to take such tasks so serious. So, you should know the goal that is can state, okay, do so, 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 then why? You can also, okay, for us to be able to know, meet the so, 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 for us to be able to achieve so, 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 that's like what the goal so this is like a framework you can always employ an employee and it is not a mox for you to use everything in the company you have to be what well, the ones that are essential that you can't do without is this what when and who well for the way that so there are times you should be able to know when you are supposed to use this and when you're supposed to use this but for this what who sorry for this who what and when you should be able to they are very very important for anything you want to communicate with your team now as said by jeffrey morales he said communicate in a respective manner respectful manner rather don't just tell your team members what you want but explain to them why so this is not peculiar to team leaders alone even as a team member if you have a co-worker as a team member you should be respective you should be respectful in your respectful in your in the manner in which you communicate and also when you are this when you are communicating don't just tell them this is what you want be very concise okay such that the person knows what you want if you don't communicate effectively it might later affect the uh the outcome of what the person is going to come up with at the end of the day then that should definitely affect your productivity to so definitely waste your time so the strategies uh you, you have to encourage open dialogue to improve communication you have to encourage open dialogue that is create an environment where team members feel comfortable sharing thoughts and ideas just like having a round table meeting such that okay just throw a topic listen to everyone let everyone communicate just like an open dialogue as a team member, as it's to encourage or to enhance your skill in your team, cultivate positive culture. It's useful start at very effective communication. They also encourage active participation and inclusivity. So this is your challenge for this exercise. So you want we want you to assume a role of a project lead. That is, you want you to assume a role 
or a project lead in a software development team. So this is the problem. Sorry, please, can you guys hear me clearly now? Hello? I just saw a shitless message. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's... Okay. So, do I need to repeat any of the slide? Please, do I need no, to... No, no, it's, it's okay. But it was too low, that's why... <laughs> we want to play increase now? The, the voice. Yeah, no, that's okay. But do I need to repeat any of the slide? No, no, it's okay. All right, yeah. thank you. So for the challenge, so you assume the role of a project lead, then you have in a software development team, then these are the challenges that you, you have. That in your team, there is less interaction within the team. That's one of the first challenge. Secondly, team diving away from the technicalities without clear plan. That is from the when we have a when you have it you put it at hand, your team is diving away from what the actual technicalities are without any clear plan. Also, for the third one, team is unclear about what they need to achieve. That is there is no clear goal or clear objective. And the, the fourth one here is your team members are working alone. And do not share what they know. They are working independently without knowledge sharing. So that these are the pro problems you have in your team, and the, these are the deliverables we want to get from you. We want to to create a six a six slide PPT. We want you to outline the communication issues in the in that scenario. That is the scenario painted there. We want you to outline what could be the issue that you have in your team. We also want you to explain each issue each, each issue potential impact on the project that is when let's assume you are light or you you mentioned four issues or five issues for instance we want you for each of those issues we want you to explain to give us the potential impact of that issue on the project and uh, we want you to provide a detailed plan action to address those issues those are the deliverables we want to get from you then this is the marking rubric this is the rubric we want to use to analyze, to mark your submissions. We'll be looking at identification of communication issues. We'll be looking at, okay, how were you able to identify the communication issues, what the issues are. We'll be looking at impact analysis. That is the impact of these issues. That is the, anal the analysis you've made. How cogent are they? We'll be looking at those impacts, those analysis. We'll be looking at your solution proposals that is after identifying these issues what are your solutions we'll be looking at communication improvements the clarity and organization of your submission that is maybe how do you format your uh, how do you organize your the issues you've highlighted your analysis the solution you're providing how clear are you we'll looking at clarity and organization then lastly we'll be looking at the grammar and the words and your language so that's the marking rubric could be looking then thank you so before i give lot to ask questions everything i've highlighted in this slide so we have them here also in this uh, so the submission date is on saturday december sorry this is a mistake sorry about this So this is submission. Then you can for the background. I've given you like an overview of the background that you've recently opened. You've recently been promoted to lead a dynamic software development team on a big project. They are great at what they do, but there is a problem with how they talk to each other. So as you get to know the team, you realize that you are not always clear they're not always clear about what they are supposed to achieve with the project they dive 
into technical stuff without the clear plan. Also, they don't talk to each other enough about how things are going. This means they sometimes don't understand how the business is progressing or if anyone needs help. Even though they are really smart, yes, they often work alone and don't share what they know. This causes this delay and makes things more complicated than they need to be. There are also some issues between team members that I don't talk to talk about. They don't talk about this tension affect how they work together and how they feel about this project. So that is the issue. Those are the issues you have in your team. Then I've analyzed your deliverables in the exercise. So your task is to analyze the scenario, identify specific action as a team leader. We take to address this communication gap and improve our overall team communication. Consider how, imp how improving communication in each team areas would lead to a more sense of project outcome and a healthier team dynamic. So this is Slack. If you have any message, you can reach out to myself or Pascaline. Then you have your marking rubric here, which I've explained. So and the experience of these activities in real life is to encourage you to think critically about your own communication challenge and how effective communication can lead to better outcomes in your workplace. It allows you to practice the analytical and problem solving skills while focusing on communication improvement. So also you So I think that's all I have for you. So if you have any question or any clarity can kindly on to stay around and talk. All right, guys, that's all you have. So please, if you have any question, any clarity, you can drop a message in the chat, or you can unmute your mic to speak. So guys, please let's ask questions if there is anything you want me to clarify. So, so Pascal, do you have any input? Okay, hello, hello everyone. Thank you, Abdullahi, for delivering the session. And uh, even though we had some of the technical difficulties in the middle of the session, can I confirm that the challenge is clear and that we are ready to deliver on time? Can I get some thumbs up or um, any comments in the chat box? OK, super happy to hear that. It's actually not a very hard challenge. Again, we repeat, let's be very ethical when it comes to our responses to these challenges. Use your content, not AI content. Please check the rubrics because that's when that's where we will be um, th that's what we will be referring to while grading. And ensure that you are really giving out standard and quality responses. And if he says that you should be responding via PowerPoints, then please let it be via, let it be via PowerPoint, not Word documents. I mean, just read throughout the challenge very well and try to do it um, in a very good world possible, just your way, you know, again, your way. So thank you so much, everyone. A little announcement about tomorrow for the trainee-led conversation we are going to be having Mubarak. Mubarak, where are you? I hope you are here. 
Mubarak Hussein is going to be the one delivering tomorrow's session. It's an interesting one, really interesting one, and I look forward to have you all attending and listening from him and learning from him, uh, because that's how we grow, by supporting each other throughout these um, training-led conversations. So thank you. Yvonne, do you have anything you want to add? Uh, I can see your hands up. Yeah, I have a question. It was, it is about mm -hmm. communication, but it is a bit off topic. I would like if you could answer me because I have seen Abdullahi, you know, a bit of communication, kindly. So it is sort of an interview question. So if someone asks you, or if the interviewer asks you, there are three, pe three key people here, there is you, there is the manager, and then there is the boss above you. The manager gives you a job to do and tells you the way you should do it. But you, with your own experience, you know doing it that way will cause a bit of an issue. And then, after finishing it, you should communicate with the top manager and give them your work, I will not be available. But when you look at it, okay, the manager, now when you look at it, you see the mistake and the manager is not reachable, the, the okay, not the top manager, the second manager next to you, just above you is not reachable. What will you do? Will you follow what the manager has told you or will you correct it and then communicate? What should you do? Okay, uh, thank you so much for that, for that question. That's an interesting question. Yeah, I think uh, we all have uh, different approaches to that question. But according to me, we have the goal is to achieve team's objective, right? And uh, regardless of the method you follow, just ensure you follow the best practice, if I am right. So you follow the best practice and uh, you ensure you diligently perform the assignment given to you. Then you communicate, then you mentioned why you followed that particular process. And you also give a clear justification why you felt the approach the manager gave you won't solve the problem, All right? So that is the approach I personally will follow if I will be in that show. Is that okay? Yes, okay, thank you. Okay, Yvonne, uh, can I ask how that question came up? Is it a question you asked yourself as they were delivering the session? Is it related to what? Can I get the background of the question? Yes, uh, the background of the question is there is a course on communication I am taking on McKinsey, and it was a question that was asked and you were told to think about and they didn't give us an answer. So I have thought about it, I have thought about it, I have thought about it, and I really did not know what to do. So I just decided to ask here and see oh, what okay. Yes. Oh, all right, all right, now I get it, now I get it. Okay, thanks for uh, asking the question here, and thanks for the response, Abdullahi. We can call it a day and um, for the career session. Yep, but we have another tutorial coming up in just a few seconds.